Hey, how's everyone doing? It's Lee Halliday here, and tonight we're going to take a look at how to use refs in React. And uh, if you don't know what a ref is, it's basically a way in React for you to have access to the underlying DOM element. So say we have a form like in this little form here, and we want to access the value that's inside of this first input here. We have to create a ref that references this input tag, so this DOM element, and then we can access all the different properties of the DOM, like the value in this case to get first here. So we're going to take a look at the three different ways of how to use refs within React. Let's bring up the code and just take a look at what we've got going on. We've got a pretty simple little app component which renders a form. And when the form is submitted, uh, we'll pass the event to this handle submit function. And right now we're just going to be preventing default, but later we'll look at how to access our different refs. Here we have one input, two, and a third, and these will be the ones we add refs to. And then we have a form section, which is just another tiny component I have up here. And it's a uh, fourth input, but the reason I have this is to show how you can access a ref to an element that lives in a child. All right, let's get started. So the first way is to add a ref prop, and this is called a string ref. And you simply in here type, we'll call this one first. So we'll save that, and then when we submit the form, we will console.log this.refs, so that gives us access to all of our string refs, dot first. So we bring this up, we click submit, and we see that we correctly accessed our DOM element here. So then if you want to, you can say dot value to get the, uh, the first value here. But uh, for now, we'll just show the actual reference to the DOM. Now I should warn you that the string form of making refs is actually discouraged and will be deprecated at some point. The reason is because it makes it hard for the internal React team to optimize code when it's this string ref format. So try not to use this, but it's here just for a reference, no pun intended, uh, in case you see it in code uh, examples or your own older code. The second way, which is sort of the encouraged way up to this point, is to pass a function to this ref prop. And what this function will do is it will receive the actual DOM input in this case, and we'll pass it to an arrow function. And then what we can do is stick it in a, in a variable. So we'll call it this.second is equal to this input tag. And it uh, prettier just formats this. But now we can come up here and we can access our this.second. So string ref was refs.first. Second one was the callback approach where we pass a function which receives the input and then we can assign that input to a variable. And let's take a look. So now we have our first one and our second one here. Okay, the third way and which is the new way. And depending when you're watching this, so right now this way is only available in the 16.3 alpha version but when 16.3 comes out, you should have access to it. So what we'll do is we'll come up here and we will create uh, a variable called third, and it will be a react.createRef value. So this would be similar to if, if you had a constructor and you said this.third equals react.createRef, but we can just put this out here in the class and it will do the same thing we'll assign it to a this variable. So we do that, now we come down to our actual input and we say that the ref is this.third. Now we come up here and we can say this.third. So we submit this again and what you'll see is something a little bit weird. It's actually an object that has a property called value which points to the input. So if you want the actual input now, you need to say dot value. So now we have the reference to our third input here. 
and it's a little weird. Say you want to actually get the actual value of that input, you have to say dot value dot value because the first one gets you the input element, and then now that we have that DOM element, we can access the value of it. So here you can see third, which is its value. All right, so those are the three different ways to do refs, but I wanted to just show you quickly how you can get a ref in the parent, this app component, of something that lives in a child. So here we're rendering the form section, and all the form section does is include an input. So let's say we wanted to have a ref to this input in the parent. And you probably want to try to avoid doing this because, um, I don't know, it's just a little bit awkward, like you're referencing something that lives inside of the child. So if you can avoid doing this, it's probably preferred, but you're eventually going to come upon a time where it makes sense to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another ref here called fourth. And now what we're actually going to do is we're going to pass that as a prop, which we'll again just call fourth. We could call it whatever we want, but and we're going to pass that this dot fourth ref down. So now we know that we're receiving fourth as a prop in form section. So we can say that the ref is equal to this dot props dot fourth. Now, when we submit the form, we should be able to access our fourth input, which lives inside of our child. So we'll submit this, and there we have first, second, third, and fourth. And just in case you wanted to um, define prop types for this, you could say static prop types. And what are we receiving? We're receiving a prop called fourth. And what is it going to be? Well, I don't know if you remember, but what when you create a ref through this approach, it gives you something that looks like this. And at the beginning, the value is null, but it eventually becomes the actual input tag. And input is an instance of HTML input element. So this is sort of what the ref will look like as it's passed to our child component. So what we could do, just I'll delete this in a sec, we can say that we want our fourth to be a prop types dot shape. And what shape does is it allows you to define the shape of the object that's arriving as a prop. So we're gonna say it's an object that has a value property or attribute. And what is the value of this value going to be? It will be prop types dot instance of an HTML input element. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this because that's not needed. So notice I didn't say required. Um, I'll show you why. Oh, shoot. So what is, is required? That's because when it first gets passed in, the value is null, so you can't say that it's required. Uh, so we'll just remove this, and everything works fine. We can come in here to our React Tools, open up, and we can see that to our child form section, we're passing, actually it looks like we're just passing an object that has value, and here we have the HTML input element. And we open it up here and we can over, come over here and see our props. So value. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, take care. Bye.